Winter is just two weeks away, and with it, doctors often see an uptick in certain injuries that may surprise you. Joining me now is sports chiropractor Dr. Chris Cueto with Herald Square Chiropractic and Sport. Hi. Dr. Chris, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to be here. Now, first of all, you've been treating my knee for a bit, and as you know, during every session, he's trying to fix me, and I'm sitting here asking him all these questions, like, <laughs> so what are you know what are patients coming in during the winter time with something? I was really surprised with your answer. Yeah. Because of the winter time, we see a lot of neck issues, shoulder issues, upper back, and of course, lower back issues. Well, why is that? Well, because well, during the winter time, we're wearing heavy coats, heavy jackets. We're carrying our backpacks around a lot more. Um, we're putting a lot of things like fixing up the tree, decorations, um, carrying a lot of shopping bags, and so forth. And of course, if you're uh, hosting families and, and parties, uh, working in the kitchen, so you're obviously going to be uh, bent over, hurting right. your back, and putting things away. See, yeah. I was really surprised because immediately I thought, oh, it slips and falls, but you actually do a lot of neck and, and mm -hmm. um, shoulder and all that. So I was asking what kind of exercises, what can people do, because we're still going to carry the bags. Absolutely. We can't avoid that at all. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the things I always show a lot of patients, these are basic things. I'm actually, matter of fact, a lot of my patients know this already, especially mm -hmm. for neck issues. We do certain exercises called the chin tuck exercise to get the strength in your, in your intrinsic muscles. So think about trying to push your head back like you're trying to make a double chin. Sometimes you can even use your fingers as a, as a guide, such as this. If you're starting to feel pain in any direction, you can always stop before that pain. It's just a subtle movement, but that actually helps a lot, too. And for a lot of times, when we're doing anything for a neck, we also work with the shoulder and upper back. Let me ask you, how many times should you do it? And this is great because it's mm -hmm. something, you guys are watching us on TV, right? Mm -hmm. You can be doing it right now. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you're at your desk, you can do it. Mm -hmm. So how, how often should we do it and how many reps? Are Honestly, ten, five to 10 times. Throughout the day, I usually uh, prescribe this to, to a lot of folks, a lot of patients. Maybe, let's say you're sitting at the desk for a full hour and you're hunched over. Take a, take a break after a whole hour and start doing about five to ten. Get a water break, stand up, move around. Positional changes are always important. Okay. Yeah. So, also, the other thing I'm going to show you, too, for anything with shoulder and upper back is called a Bruger's position. So, you could actually either seat it like this on the edge of the table or a chair or standing up. But we'll do the seated right here. So, from here, you're going to go ahead and do a chin tuck. And keeping your shoulders down, we're going to go ahead and focus on pulling your shoulder blades back. And for a lot of folks, as a cue, we could also use your hands to kind of rotate it out so it's actually uh, pointing out, uh, facing out outward or front. So holding this for about five seconds at a time and increase, increase it to 10 seconds at a time, maybe three times, four times, five times, will definitely help you out also, especially for the upper back, shoulder, and neck pain issues. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. I love how they're so easy and, and actually subtle. You can Absolutely. do it anywhere. Absolutely. What else do you have for us? For, also, for lower back, these are simple things. So I'm doing this right now. We're always slunched over, yeah. especially for folks right now who's, do, who's working in the office or doing hybrid, um, or again, I'm putting away, I'm putting toys, uh, uh, putting, put, putting toys together. So again, standing up, Take a break from your activity, putting your hand behind your back, and just simply leaning back like this. What this does, it helps stretch out your hip flexors, and it also helps with restoring the curve of your lower back. And this actually feels really good, especially if you're doing, if you're traveling, let's say plane rides, mm -hmm. hours on end, sleeping on a, fa a, fa a family couch. These are helpful too if you're having any type of lower back issues. That's okay. great. Is there anything else we'd like to show you? No, well, I know you have mm -hmm. some that, that are yeah. gonna, we're going to use the mat for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Most of the time, this is a great thing for, for your lower back, but there's some other things that we could do to stretch out for our lower back as well. And believe it or not, those hip flexors, like your psoas muscles, are also highly affected because they're also so tight. So a nice simple thing we could do is we could do a half kneeling stretch like this. And just like this, I'm, I'm targeting the right side. We're just gonna keep our, ba our back straight and we're gonna go ahead and lean forward. I usually, hold, I usually uh, prescribe this for about 30 seconds. If you're comfortable, maybe even a full minute if you're fully warmed up. And we can always switch, switch the other side as well, mm -hmm. okay? For anything else, let's say your glutes in the lower back, I could also, and I, I'm, I know I'm not just for a tier two, but you could definitely go ahead and do things such as a, knee to, a simple knee to chest, mm -hmm. just to go ahead and stretch out the rest of your lower back. If you really wanna get some more rotations in, get your hands out, your knee across your side, nice and gentle, not sudden movements, and you can do a full stretch, both sides, the left, the right side, and of course the left side. These are really, really great movements and stretches for your lower back, and of course what I spoke about with your with your neck and upper back as well. Wow. Yeah. Uh, any other, I, I don't know, alerts or things you want people to know because you see the problems coming into your office during this time. Sure. So. Obviously, we have a lot of strains in the, uh, and of course, these are things that ha do happen too, such as slips and falls, shoveling snow. When you're shoveling snow, take a break. 
All right. I know that we may have snowstorms. You're going for, for for hours, half an hour break each time. Do those type of stretches. If you slip and fall, you definitely need to see a medical seek medical attention right away. Um, what if, do you think? Mm -hmm. How often should we take a break with the snow? With the snow shoveling? So, yeah. Thirty minutes. Uh, every, every, thir every thirty minutes. Every thirty minutes. Yeah, okay. Especially okay. for a large snowfall. Absolutely. All right. Doctor, thank you so much. Thank you. I, that one, that, that, that exercise mm -hmm. that you showed, that's the one that I'm supposed to be doing. And I don't <laughs> do that. So I'll try to do better. All right.